um, specifically with early learning, um, uh, things that parents and any caretakers can do for their for their uh, children. So our mission um, as an as a initiative in the county is to ensure that all children in Gwinnett are ready to thrive in kindergarten. And so that lines up perfectly with BCDI's um, mission of um, if if we support our black children, then we're also supporting all children. And so um, that is why we love our partnership with BCDI um, and all things that we can do for all the children in Gwinnett County. Um, we know that the first five years have so much to do with how the next 80 turn out. And we can look to our educators and to um, all of those folks who support our kids in school settings. But we know ultimately during those first five years, it is our parents and caretakers who are um, the uh, each each child's first and best teacher. And so the goal of building baby's brain, really the strategy that we bring to the mission is that we want to make sure that our parents and caretakers um, of all kinds um, are equipped with the resources and the skills and the strategies that they need and have access to high quality programming um, so that our children can can be ready to thrive in kindergarten. We know this statistic and it's a big deal, right? The fact that 80% of a child's brain is developed by age three and 90% by age five um, really lets us know that these first five years are critical. And so instead of us stating lots of statistics or quoting a lot of research, we're gonna let Molly here do that for us. So I'm gonna um, share uh, a quick TED Talk. I think it's my favorite TED Talk of all time. You may have seen it before, and if you have, enjoy it again. Um, every time I see this, I get a kick out of it. So enjoy Molly and um, how every child can thrive by five. What if I was to tell you that a game of peekaboo could change the world? Sounds impossible, right? Well, I'm here today to prove it's not. Hi, I'm Molly. And I'm Seven. And this is my little friend, Ari. Say hi, Ari. <laughs> hi. Oh, and this is my neighbour, Alma Jot. He has to take Ari away now to get ready for our experiment. But don't worry, they'll be back. My talk today is about some powerful things you grown-ups can do that shape us as children and the adults we become. How do I know? Because my parents and people around me did them, early and often. I know not all kids are as lucky. Some of my friends, some kids at my school and many around the world and I would really like to help change that. Thanks to scientists, we now know just how important the first five years are for our health and development, especially our brains. Ari started learning long before he was even born from inside his mummy's tummy. When Ari was born, he was tiny and he cried all the time. He was always hungry and he pooped a lot. Now, he laughs and giggles and makes funny noises. But those are just the changes we hear and see. There's way more going on inside. So, let's talk more about our brains. The blue bag is the rough size and weight of a healthy baby's brain at birth. The red one is a baby's brain after the first year. It almost doubles in volume. And by my age, it's almost 90% the volume of an adult brain. <laughs> our brains develop faster in our early years than at any other time in our lives. It can create up to one million neural connections every second. But we need your help. 
our healthy development depends on these top five things. One, connecting. Two, talking. Three, playing. Four, a healthy home. Five, community. All of this helps our brains and does reach our full potential. So what's something you can do that can really make a difference? Scientists call it serve and return. That's just a grown up way of saying connect, talk and play with us. And here's the really big news. Amajot, Ari, you ready? Ready. Copycat games build imagination and empathy. And... <laughs> Naming games build vocabulary and attention. Is it Daddy? Ari, Daddy, Ari. <laughs> and games like Peekaboo, yep, Peekaboo, actually build memory and trust. <laughs> Each time you talk to us, play with us, make us laugh, it not only builds and strengthens our relationships and mental health, it actually teaches us some of the most important life skills. From making friends, to taking a test, to getting a job, to one day maybe even starting a family of our own. Interactions early and often matter. Take it from me, the seven-year-old up here, talking about brain science. <laughs> okay, now. Let's see what happens when the connection is taken away. So now he's trying to get his dad's attention again. He's reaching out like, that was fun, why have you stopped? I know it's important for adults to use their devices sometimes, but kids are hardwired to seek out meaningful connections, not receiving them causes confusion and stress. Okay, Amajot, please re-engage. <laughs> now, what if a whole childhood was like that last 30 seconds? How hard it would be for a child to feel calm, to feel safe, to learn to trust anyone and the lifelong impact that would have. That makes me feel sad. Ari only reacted the way he did and recovered so quickly because the connection between him and his dad is usually so strong. The positive relationships with the grown-ups in our lives gives kids the confidence we need to try new things, to explore, and be a kid. So please try and remember the most special period for our development is the first five years. Starting from inside mommy's tummy. What's something really impactful you can do? Serve and return. And when? Early and often. Please give it up for Emma Chot and Ari. Every moment together is an opportunity to connect, talk and play. Imagine the difference we could make if everyone everywhere did this. To us, to children. It's so much more than just a game. It's our future. Thank you. See, Peekaboo really can change the world. Well, if we didn't feel like our jobs were important before that TED Talk, we know now that we have a just about the most important jobs as uh, the first and best teachers for these early learners. Um, we know how important our jobs are and how our, and how important our roles are. So um, building babies' brains exists because of what Molly just shared, because the first five years are so important and every single person who supports, cares for, you know, 
is around children in this age group needs to understand this and know this and is responsible for supporting children in this way. Again, and I don't blame it. All right. So like I said, Building Babies Brains is a community initiative bringing together everybody and anybody in support of early learning in Gwinnett County. And we um, have a website that is just literally the hub for early learning resources in Gwinnett. Um, this, our website has resources and tools, information, articles, podcasts, links to other websites and other resources from other people's um, and other organizations, early learning sites and pages. Um, we're available in Chinese, English, Korean, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Um, and um, just, just a wealth of information for parents and caregivers of early learners. We're also um, online on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So if you uh, follow any of those social media platforms, we, we hope that you'll follow us as well. Share, tag us, anything that has to do with early learning, we'd love um, to know about it and to be a part of it as well. This QR code right here will take you directly to the English um, uh, website page. So um, it'll be on the final slide of our presentation as well, but just know you have um, really quick access by using that QR code. So some of the free resources um, on our our page are going to be divided up by age group. So it really helps parents navigate the website easily or you know, caregivers directly to, to what they're looking for and what they need. And then there are some other sections of the website that aren't necessarily age specific, but resource specific, such as health resources or activities to do at home, as you'll see in the bottom box. And recently we have added all of our different um, postcards and um, any extra literature that we've created or promotional items, we've added it to a shareable resources part of our website. So if you are a business owner, an early learning center, or you send home newsletters, you can go straight there and capture some of those resources and add them to your own mailings and your own digital um, platforms as well for your specific um, community. There is a development survey that we want every parent in Gwinnett County to, to take um, where they go in and they answer some questions based on their child. And it, it brings them some information about the website that will help with their specific needs um, and the specific age and um, the way that they answer the question. So this is a really cool piece, also pretty new to our website. And we've got, um, we've received a lot of positive feedback. Our, our website can be overwhelming, some say, just because there is so much there. And not everything is for everybody. And so starting um, in the website with this development survey can really help um, individuals navigate and get exactly what they need and when they need it. And then something that we absolutely love and we need your help to build this content here is our event calendar. This is open to the public. Anybody can submit an event um, and it comes to, to our team and it is reviewed by the event calendar committee. And if the event is number one, located in Gwinnett, number two, um, supports the early learning community, so children birth through five and their families, and is free and low cost because we want everything on our website to be accessible to as many people as possible. We know there are amazing uh, day camps and there are amazing opportunities that um, cost a lot of money out there, but we don't want those to be on our website because that means a good chunk of the people going to our website won't be able to access that. So um, feel free to, to get on there. And if your organization or if you know of something for early learners around your area, please get on there and submit it. And we'd love to include that in our event calendar. We know a lot of parents in our community go here every single day to see what's going on in Gwinnett and to see which library is having an event, which park and parks and rec event is near their home, what's happening, what fall festival in their community is available. So um, please use this and help us um, continue to build our event calendar for the community. 
And then in addition to that, um, you'll notice some Great Little Minds book exchanges at the parks. There are actually 68 Great Little Minds book exchanges um, around Gwinnett County. This started um, as a partnership through Building Babies Brains with the coalition. Um, and um, our Parks and Rec partners, um, B Squared Anywhere and that team is really taking um, the lead on this. And so again, under the Building Babies Brains umbrella, we have given out over 70,000 books in the hands of kids birth through five through these boxes, which is incredible. And that's in about two and a half years. Um, and, and they just keep rolling in through partnerships. And uh, that is really important that we have those high quality resources and books in the hands of our kids. And then if you or anyone you know has had a baby um, at either Northside Gwinnett or now we have a new partnership with P uh, Piedmont Eastside, you will, the, they will receive a bag called a Brain at Work bag that has a onesie and um, a Talk With Me Baby book inside and then information about how to be your child's first and best teacher in the hands of these new parents so that right off the bat, they know how important their role is as their child's first and best teacher and some, some resources that will help them um, to be just that for them. So that's Building Babies Brains. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Nix. Um, she is going to take on the first age group we're going to talk about today, hopefully giving you some great ideas of some things to do during the summer. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Perfect. I'm Kelly Nix. I am um, a coordinator over early learning. I um, have the privilege with my team of supporting birth to five initiatives in our Gwinnett County Public Elementary Schools. Um, and so we are working with early learning teachers in uh, our elementary schools and then with our parents that come to various um, early learning initiatives on ways to work um, with their with their children and be their child's first and best teacher. So I'm very excited to be here with you and just wanted to share a couple other ideas for um, learning over the summer. So we know that Molly taught us uh, in that TED Talk video so wonderfully for a seven-year-old, and it's crazy, but um, learning begins at birth. And our, our babies and our toddlers are not empty vessels to be filled. They are curious explorers of the world. And so there's a there's a variety of verbs, action words up on your screen. Those um, are taken from the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards. So you can see as early as 12 months old, our babies are learning and showing us they're learning by repeating, by participating, by imitating. Um, and then if you scroll to the next page, our 12 to 24 month olds are doing all of those things, but they're also, they're asking and they're selecting and they're recognizing, pretending, copying. They are showing us how much learning is happening. And so these action words, if you look at them, so many of them require interaction with an adult, right? To communicate between, to uh, pretend, to copy, to mimic, all of these things require interaction. And so again, as Molly told us in the TED Talk, it speaks so much of us being active participants in our babies' lives. So also, being an active participant um, also means talking with our baby. And so we're also gonna learn from baby Ella who teaches us about the power of language and words with our babies. All parents want the best for their baby. And we know healthy food helps grow a healthy baby. But to grow a healthy brain, babies need more. Babies need lots of loving words. A baby's brain grows super fast. Research shows that the amount of loving words a baby hears in the first three years of life can make a big difference. Meet baby Ella. Ella's mom, dad, grandma, and sister all shower her with lots of loving words and encouragement, and every word she hears helps her brain grow. By talking, reading, and singing with Ella, everyone is helping her develop an essential life skill the ability to read by third grade. And once Ella learns to read, she'll be ready and able to learn anything she wants. But what if Ella doesn't get lots of loving words as a baby? Without a steady diet of loving words, Ella may only know half the words of her friends, which will make her feel lost and behind. Without knowing as many words, it will be harder for Ella to express her feelings when she gets frustrated and school stops being fun. 
If she doesn't learn to read, she'll be four times more likely to drop out of school. And it gets worse. Kids who don't finish high school are more likely to have poor health, become a teen parent, be unemployed, and end up in jail. Not the future we imagined for baby Ella, is it? That's why it's so, so important for families, friends, and caregivers to talk with their babies early and often. The best part? It's free. All you have to do is talk with your baby as you go about your day. So that video comes from Talk With Me Baby. And part of our work, working in the school system and with families, is really that message of talking to your baby is one of the most important things that you can do. Early and often comes up a lot. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a parent of two children under five, and I don't even think that I realize how impactful talking to your baby really is. So um, Stacey, if you want to go to the next slide. All parents want. So we wanted to take a minute. You've been listening to us talk for, for a few minutes now. So drop us in the chat some loving words or phrases that you use with your own children or your children in an early learning center or um, if you're a caregiver. So it can be anything. It can be um, a nickname. It can be a positive affirmation. So I love you. One of the most important things. You heard them say loving words. You knew just what to do. You're such a smart boy. You make me smile. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You're so special to me. Fish your brain. I love that one from a teacher days. You're my friend, you're the best. Yep, all of these, these, again, as a parent, I didn't even realize the brain, the brain building power. You know, you, you know that you should say things like that to your kids, but to see Ella um, and what it does for a baby's brain is so important. So thank you for sharing that, y'all. Okay, so um, just a couple of things, um, whether you're in an early learning center or you're a parent on this call, what can you be doing with your infant or toddler this summer? We've said it uh, a few times already, but talk with your baby. Serve in return. If your infant is cooing at you and smiling, you're doing that right back. Those are the beginnings of language. Um, naming familiar objects in your child's world as you go on a walk, you're pointing things out. And then narrating your day, I'll be honest, with my own uh, little one, it felt kind of uncomfortable at first to talk about what I was doing while I was giving him a bath or changing his diaper, but just that constant flow of language that that baby is absorbing. And then as Ella taught us, lots and lots of loving words. And then reading with your baby, right? So reading starts from the minute a baby is born. We don't wait till they're five and six to read. So cuddling together, building that emotional bond is such a special time um, as you read. So having your child or, or a child in your center sitting on your lap or right next to you, pointing to the pictures, naming the objects and the illustrations, helping even your little toddler turn the pages of the book and learn how to hold that book in their hands appropriately are the beginning concepts of print. Um, and then reading stories multiple times, repeated readings, um, build language. And then engaging in lots of great sensory experiences together. So um, sensory experiences don't have to cost any money at all. It's going on a walk and touching the leaves in the grass. It's playing on the playground. It's um, putting a bowl of water, as you see with that baby, or touching ice and talking about how it feels using those describing words, or just even putting music on and having a dance party. All of those are building baby's brain. Okay, so now I just want to talk for a very few minutes about twos and threes and some great ideas that you can be doing this summer with your twos and threes. So I am the mother of a two-year-old. His name is Jack. And if I know anything, I know that little people have big, big feelings. So little Jack can go from smiling one minute to a complete meltdown the next. But that what I'm learning, right, is that that is completely developmentally appropriate and natural. And it's our job as parents to help our little people learn to navigate these big feelings. 
So we've got one more short video for you. Small children have big feelings. Our children's behavior may seem like it comes from nowhere, but there's more to it than we think. Go to talkingisteaching.org slash big feelings to discuss. So in that, vi I think that video perfectly kind of encapsulates and spoke to me when I first saw it. You know, we take for granted as adults that being a little person learning and navigating a big world is hard. I, I think that image of where he's trying to get the circle to fit into the shape sorter and how much mental power and how hard that is. And so um, it really made me sit, like take a step back as a parent and reflect on the things that we take for granted, like running the vacuum cleaner and a kid having a meltdown over it. There's always an emotion behind the behavior. And um, again, life Life is hard. They're learning so much in these years, and we need to honor that. So a big part of our twos and threes and the work that we do, either as a parent, caregiver, or an, um, a teacher, is teaching our twos and threes emotional intelligence, right? Where the brain meets the heart. And we say in our office that emotional intelligence is taught, it's not born, right? And so we're teaching them to count, and we're teaching kids letters, and we're teaching them fine motor skills. But at the heart of it all, we need to be teaching emotional intelligence, our little people, how to understand emotions, recognize emotions, and then coping strategies for when they have these big emotions, because really that's the key to success in school um, and in life. So just a couple of things to be doing with our twos and threes this summer, talking about emotions. So as an adult and a parent, I need to be naming my emotions and saying, gosh, mommy feels frustrated when you don't da da da, or um, you know, mommy feels happy when you come and give me a hug and read with me, but also naming their emotions. So Jack, you look like you feel sad or you're feeling sad because it's time to leave the playground and giving them words for those feelings. That's really important. And then also recognizing emotions and feelings in the books that we're reading. So when we have that cuddle time at the end of the day and we're reading with them, we also want to be pointing out the pictures. She looks happy. I can see her smiling in this picture. So going along um, with talking about emotions, again, is reading every day and making your two and three-year-old a more active participant in the reading process, right? So we're going to be reading with our babies, and you already are from the day they're born, but as they become two and three, we want them to take on more active roles. So uh, getting some more interactive books in their hands, like head to toe, where they have to act out the, uh, the motions or make the, the sounds that an animal makes. I'm um, getting your child, your two or three year old to point to different pictures. Can you show me the cat? Do you see the tree? Um, and then having your three year old really begin as their language develops more and more to be able to help retell that story with pictures. 
especially if it's a familiar one we've read over and over. Um, and then my final kind of slide here is really, um, we want to be working on all kinds of things and learning is embedded in all aspects of life, but our two and three year olds really start to work on those fine motor skills. So um, we know that strengthening our hand muscles um, and our dexterity is really the precursors to writing and sets our kids up for success um, in school. So anything that kids are doing with their hands, like building towers with blocks, playing with Play-Doh and rolling out snakes and balls with that Play-Doh, finger painting with pudding or shaving cream, um, even water painting on a sidewalk, all of those are building that fine, that fine motor skill and the hand strength to be great writers later on. So that's all for me right now. Just a couple of easy free ideas um, to do with your infants through three-year-olds. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Cannon. I am also a coordinator in the Office of Early Learning and School Readiness. And I work with our pre-K program as well as our summer learning program for rising kindergartners. And that's who I wanna talk to you about today is rising kindergartners. And those are our four-year-olds who will be five on or before September 1st. So they'll be going to kindergarten in the fall. So what are the skills that these older children, um, old, older early learners, need in order to be ready to thrive as a brand new kindergartner when they go to school in the fall. Um, well, I want to take a look at, at what they're going to do when they get to kindergarten, but then also what are some things that we can do in our everyday life, whether that's at home or in an early learning center, um, to help kids with those foundational skills and being ready. So we're going to start with speaking and listening, and those are the skills that we need to be able to communicate and eventually to be able to read. So in kindergarten, children are going to participate in large group learning activities where they're going to be expected to listen to their teacher, and they're going to be expected to listen to others, and they're also going to be expected to share their own thoughts and their ideas. So some great things that we can do with children is, first of all, just talk about your day. You're modeling by talking and telling all the things that you've done, and then you give them a turn to practice and do the same thing that you did. Um, children are learning how to have conversations, some back and forth turn taking and communicating, and they're also learning how to tell stories, which are some precursors to eventually being able to write stories. Um, also, um, talk about activities as you're doing them in real time. Um, cooking, grocery shopping, playing on the playground, taking a walk, driving in the car. The things that you're doing as you're modeling, you're talking about it, kids can then respond and they can start talking about it as well. And they're learning how to sequence events that's gonna help them again with retelling stories or learning how to write their own stories. Play letter games. Um, think of a letter um, and then think of as many words as you can um, that start with that letter or just look for letters in the environment. Um, as you're driving down the road or taking a walk outside, you know, M for McDonald's, Z for Zaxby's, um, the environmental print is what kids tend to recognize um, first. Um, so practice finding those letters or just practice listening for those sounds. Um, make lists. So learning categories helps to build vocabulary. So think of as many animals as you can think of. Um, and they don't have to be a written list. It can just be a list out loud. Um, after you practice with animals, do colors, um, foods. How many different foods can you think of? And then finally, um, another um, activity um, for speaking and listening is just taking a walk outside. Um, close your eyes and listen. What are all the sounds that you can hear out in the environment? You can do this inside as well. It works um, inside or outside, but children are learning how to listen carefully and they're learning how to discern the differences in sounds, which you're going to need to know um, for letter sounds and eventually being able to read and write. Okay, all right, so reading. Let's talk about early literacy skills. Kids need these early literacy skills in order to eventually be able to read on their own. In kindergarten, children will participate in large group, small group, and independent reading activities to build those skills. They're learning from the books that are being read aloud to them and from shared reading experiences. Okay, so what can we do every day? Just read. 
Um, reading together, look at the pictures in a book. As you see this little girl here in this picture is in, in this photograph is pointing to the pictures in the book. You can talk about the illustrations in a story without ever reading the text. You can tell the story through the pictures um, and then you can read the text to match to the illustrations. Children are learning vocabulary and they're also learning how to make meaning from the story itself. Okay? Tell the story together using the pictures um, to make real world connections. It helps them if you see the pictures first and look at the pictures and talk about them and then you read the words that go together with the pictures, then they can make um, a connection and an understanding of what the actual words in the text are saying. Think of different endings for a story. Think of those what if. What if you changed some details or events in the story? Kids, again, are continuing to make meaning by making real world connections. They're getting a deeper understanding of the text when you're changing around um, the events in the story and creating that own ending on their own. This is a little harder um, for some kids, but model and practice, do it together. Um, read the same book a few times and then retell that story. They can retell the story just from memory. They can retell the story um, using the pictures, but this is practice in sequencing events. Um, and again, practice for writing your own stories. Okay. Um, and the most important thing to, to remember is just reading together every day is gonna help build your child's skills um, that they're going to need to eventually be able to read alone. All right, writing. So when we think about writing, there's two different aspects of writing we're gonna talk about. One is that physical component or the fine motor skills. Um, Kelly was talking a few minutes ago about how you start building fine motor skills with your two and three-year-olds and the activities that you can do um, playing with toys um, to start building those finger and hand skills. And those are the skills that our rising kindergartners are gonna need to eventually be able to hold a pencil and hold a piece of paper and then form and write letters and draw pictures so they can communicate in writing. Then we have that academic skill of writing where students are learning to put their ideas on paper in a manner that makes sense so that when you read their writing, you understand what they're trying to say. So with fine motor skills, um, lacing beads, lacing cereal, just using a shoelace with some Fruit Loops. Lacing cereal is great practice in using hands together and picking up small items with your fingers. It also works on that eye and hand coordination. Stacking blocks is a great way to work on eye hand coordination, which is going to be important for being able to form and write letters as you're looking at your paper. Um, and then eating finger foods, just picking up grapes, picking up cereal, picking up crackers, um, helps to build those fine muscles, those small muscle skills, um, which build strength for eventually being able to hold um, writing utensils to write. Okay. And then in thinking about just the ideas that go along with writing, as we were talking about reading stories and being able to learn how to tell your own stories, um, writing is getting those ideas on paper. So just practice with writing tools. Students don't have to always be writing with pencils and paper. They can write with just about um, anything that's going to produce a print on paper or the sidewalk, um, crayons, markers, paint, magna doodles, um, sidewalk chalk outside, shaving cream in the bathtub, um, even just a paintbrush and a cup of water. Um, children can work on those, um, those writing strokes and letters and numbers and shapes. Um, draw pictures together. Um, and take turns adding details. Um, one person can draw, you know, the tree and then somebody draws the house and then somebody draws a swing set. Um, but tell a story as you're drawing a picture together. Um, practice writing the names of family and friends. That's, um, that's familiar environmental print um, to a child. So practicing um, being able to write those names with pencils, crayons, markers, paint, shaving cream, chalk, all those same writing um, utensils. It doesn't always have to be um, a lined piece of paper with a pencil um, to write. Make a grocery list. Whenever you're making grocery lists, or a list of anything else that you need to um, uh, to do list. Um, let kids help do that by drawing pictures. We draw pictures before we write words so we can draw pictures and write words together. Um, and then copying, just copying words, opportunities. There's so many words um, around the classroom. There's so many words around um, the inside and the, in the kitchen and the bathroom of your house. And there are lots of words outside too. So giving children chances to find those environmental print words and then copying them themselves. 
right? And then let's talk about math. So math happens all day, every day. Um, there's math all around us and counting numbers, um, describing words, um, sorting colors, um, patterns that are in the environment, spatial relationships, shapes, they're everywhere. Um, and math skills are those skills that we um, need to eventually be able to solve some problems. So what can we do all day, every day? Um, count, just count out loud. Just keep practicing counting higher and higher and higher. Um, for those rising kindergartners, those teen numbers are really hard. And so that takes a lot of extra practice. They don't always fit in the pattern as well as the 20s and 30s and 40s. Um, so it takes a lot of practice to um, remember the, those teen numbers and being able to count to 20, which is what we would hope that kids can do going into kindergarten. So count while waiting, count while walking, count while um, in the car, um, count anything and everything, anything you can find, windows, shoes, pillows, um, chicken nuggets, anything that you can count, count. Um, look for shapes all around the environment. You might find them inside, you might find them outside and talk about them. Talk about um, those 2D shapes, you know, the ones that we're real familiar with that kids learn first are circle, square, triangle, rectangle, but also talk about, um, you know, cylinders, cans, you know, a can of green beans that you might be cooking for dinner. Um, that's the shape of a cylinder or talk about the shape of a cereal box, those 3D shapes as well. Um, sorting, again, just like counting, you can sort just about anything, um, cereal, socks, utensils, um, practicing sorting and counting um, with anything you can find in your house, including maybe Legos, markers, crayons, um, and then patterns. Um, patterns isn't just about making patterns. Um, we think when we think about patterns, lots of times we think about red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, making a pattern, but also finding patterns. There's patterns all over our environment. Um, and patterns help us with making predictions um, and learning patterns in math. So like this little girl has a pattern on her shirt. Um, and so those are the, in thinking about speaking and listening and reading and writing and math, those are those academic skills that we think about kids needing when they get to kindergarten. But they also need um, some other skills um, going in to kindergarten to be successful on those first few days and learning how to navigate a new environment, learning about routines, learning about rules, learning new people. Um, so some things that we can do um, over the summer is following routines for daily activities. Um, just establishing those routines early, morning routines, nighttime routines, mealtime routines, toileting routines, um, you know, with clothing and, and washing your hands. Um, doing chores together. In school, children are going to work together to complete tasks. So start practicing um, at home or practicing in um, any sort of an early learning um, situation where kids are working together to complete tasks. Um, encourage children to start having some independence. Um, where are those times of the day that with your support and guidance and supervision um, that they can start to do some things on their own? Um, dressing themselves, completing those toileting routines, washing hands, cleaning up after meals, um, cleaning up their toys. What are those things that they can start doing on their own? Um, talk about rules. We know that in school, there's a whole lot more people there. Um, children may be used to being at home with um, you know, a caregiver alone. They may be used to being with just a small group of kids, two or three. They may be used to being in a classroom of 10 children or 20 children, um, but they're all coming from different environments to this new environment where there are a lot of kids and there's typically one teacher, hopefully with some pair of support, um, but they have to learn how to wait for attention. They have to learn how to appropriately gain attention. They have to learn how to share things. They have to learn how to take turns. Um, and so they also have to learn how to walk around the, the hallways, <clears throat> how to get up and down the hallways to find their classroom. Um, what do you do in a, a bathroom where there's 10 stalls versus um, a bathroom at home where there's only um, one stall for you? So start working, um, talking about rules and, and how rules are good for us and how it impacts other people. Um, and then talk about your feelings. With our two and three-year-olds, we were talking about how important it is to learn how to recognize your own feelings, how to recognize feelings in others, and how to express your feelings appropriately. And we can teach our rising kindergartners how to do that by modeling and talking about our own feelings, 
um, and then helping them to start to pay attention to when I see somebody's uh, look on their face, what does that probably mean? And start navigating situations. And then of course, read every single day. All right, so those are some tips for those kids that are getting ready to go to um, what we sometimes call big school um, or kindergarten into the, um, into the, hopefully into a school system or into a private situation. So um, I would like to wrap up um, for early learning and school readiness. Um, what are some summer resources that are available? So we have a program called Play to Learn I'm gonna talk to you about in just a minute, but we have a Play to Learn at Home website um, here you can see. And we can drop the um, link in the chat for you. And the Play to Learn website offers um, a lot of activities. There's videos to watch. Um, there's activities to do. And on this um, page, there is a summer fun learning calendar for home um, that when you click on it, it gives activities to do for every day of the week for early learners birth to five. It's moving slowly, but it'll pop up. Maybe. So there it is. Um, it, it's printable and it has some additional resources through the QR code where you can get to. Um, but it gives some ideas of some things that you can do throughout the summer um, to keep kids learning at home. Um, and then when we go back, we also have an option for those um, rising kindergartners, which is focused on some more of those kindergarten type skills. Um, what are we doing? Um, getting ready to be in school in the fall. Um, I'm not sure how it looks on your screen. On my screen, it's a little bit blurry, but we did put the link in the chat um, so that you can go and you can explore in each one of these gray tabs that you see, you may not be able to read it, but it gives activities to do like on Monday, um, some talking activities to work on speaking and listening. One day of the week, it gives math activities to do, um, some literacy activities to do, but it's activities to stay busy all summer long to work on those um, early kindergarten skills. Okay, and then just um, for your information, what else does Gwinnett County Public Schools have to offer? So um, during the fall um, and the spring throughout the school year, we have um, what we call our Play to Learn program. Um, it's available at all elementary schools in Gwinnett County, and it is a program that's once a week for 90 minutes where parents and caregivers come to school with their child, their early learner, birth to five, um, to learn about how to be your child's first and best teacher. So a lot of the tips and, and things for summer learning that we've shared today are things that we share um, in our classes. And we um, go through a typical preschool day and we do interactive read alouds and we do science and math and social emotional learning. Um, so it's a great thing that if you're in the Gwinnett County Public Schools area, um, it's available at all local elementary schools. Um, and through those local elementary schools, we also have um, our early learners are included in school nights event, school night events, or in Little Learners Academy, which is a more of a condensed version of our play to learn class that's not every single week. Um, so if you live in the area um, and you're interested, please contact your local school um, to find out a little bit more information there. Um, we also offer um, services for children with some special needs. So we have our early childhood special education program um, for three and four year olds with IEPs. Um, we have um, be on the lookout next year if you live in the area and you have um, a rising four year old, a rising pre-K student, um, our pre-K lottery um, opens in the spring. Um, as well as our kindergarten registration. And if you register for kindergarten um, early, um, you can get into our Rising K Academy program for the summer, which is for rising kindergartners where they go to school um, during our summer learning time for three weeks um, to practice all of those school skills. Um, and we have a whole lot more things coming soon, like Play to Learn TV, um, some parent trainings, and we have a Play to Learn on the go bus um, that will roll out really soon. All right, so I think we're going to end just on time. Thank you guys so much. Um, 
really it, it takes a village and we we call each and every person the child's first and best teacher but we know it takes lots of first and best teachers to prepare our kiddos um and, and make sure that they're ready to thrive in kindergarten so look for us building babies brains whether it's in support of school system, um, library, BCDI, uh, Parks and Rec, anywhere we can be in Gwinnett, anywhere the early learning is, hopefully Building Babies Brains is there. If you see Brainy, you see Brainy in those pictures, that's our mascot, one of our wonderful ambassadors. If you see Brainy, you know we're around there somewhere, so we, we hope to see you soon. If you have any questions or are interested in more information about Gwinnett Building Babies Brains, always um, check out our website, follow us on social media, but feel free to reach out um, and uh, keep in touch and let us know what's going on in your early learning worlds in Gwinnett. So from Heather, Kelly, and I, thank you so much for being here. And I'm gonna turn it back over to BCDI. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Kelly. Great information. Did you all know all of that is happening, has been happening in Gwinnett? Wow. So there is so much you can share. You receive a follow-up email from us with these links uh, so that you can uh, see what's coming up in your area. Uh, in the chat, you have a link to our uh, survey. Please complete that survey. So this helps us to know uh, what you have learned today and helps us to plan the next event so we know how well we're doing and what we need to tweak. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. I want to also put in the chat I'm just going to put the link to our newsletter, our news page. This way you can see all of our upcoming events and uh, all the news that we don't have to share. So I'm going to go quickly and wrap us up here. Next slide. Uh, we know you guys, there are some links and resources available. Since this was an early care community cafe, an early education community cafe, at the bottom of our early care page, you all can find more resources that we've collected for you on early care and learning. Ways to get involved. We definitely want you all to... Um, yeah, you can back up. Mom. We have a board. We have board openings, board appointments open. So on our careers page, you can learn more about those. We are helping 60 early educators earn their degree in early childhood education. So, hey, come on over. I see a couple of our coaches here, our education coaches. We want our teachers to be credentialed, uh, you, whether you're earning an associate degree or a bachelor's degree. We are coaching you and helping you with earning your degree. So that information, again, is on our careers page. It's also in our newsletter. Again, the link is in the chat. Always, you can become a member. When you join BC Atlanta, you also a member. You're also a member of NBCDI, so it's a National Professional Association membership. And we hope that you would choose BCDI Atlanta as your affiliate. There are 24 uh, uh, NBCDI affiliates, and we hope that you would choose Atlanta. Yes, so ne next week is our next community cafe is on June 21st, and the title is Stream with Black Children. That's science, technology, reading, engineering, arts, and math. And our featured partner is Raising a Reader. So join us so you can learn more. Uh, it's on our events page. So again, you can check that out and register for that event on two to at 2 to 3 a.m. on June 21st. Next. All right, next week is National Black Child Development Week. All over the nation, NBCDI affiliates will be hosting events. So let me show you what we're doing here in Atlanta. As we support the other affiliates, this is what we have going on. On Thursday, I'm serving on a panel uh, at, the, uh, at Morehouse School of Medicine. So again, you have this information in your uh, follow-up email. So the NAF, this, this conference is actually free. It's hybrid. You can go in person or online and it's free. So you can register. On June 9th, on that Friday, I am having a fireside chat with Mayor Dickens. So we're talking about Atlanta Year of the Youth. So join us for uh, a conversation with the, pre with the um, I want to call him the president. Oh, uh, a conversation with our mayor. It will be on Facebook Live and YouTube um, as well. Our next quarterly affiliate meeting is July 11th. It's also 
Summer Literacy Night. So Family Literacy Night. So join us for Family Literacy Night. That's when we feature our two books uh, through our partnership with Gears, Mayor Summer Reading Club. So join us on July 9th for our Family Literacy Night, which is also our, also our quarterly affiliate meeting. All right, Community Cafe on August 23rd. We are having Dr. Christy Moore from DECAL. She's talking about money, 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 money for early childhood educator, educators. So if you want to go back to school, you guys, Georgia is doing it right. For nearly 20 years, we have had funding to support early educators in earning their degrees. And every time they earn a credential, they get funding um, um, scholarships and incentives as well. So there's a lot of money available, new money available, and we want to tell you all about it. So join us in August for that one. And it's also up on our website on our events page now. Don't forget about the National Conference in Charlotte this year, Charlotte, North Carolina, October 13th through 15th will be there. So again, it's in our newsletter. That link is in the chat. Save the date for our next summit, our fifth annual Cultural Response of Early Education Care Summit in person, downtown Atlanta, Louder Milk Conference Center on February 21st. So join us on that day for our next summit. And I believe I've subscribed to our newsletter. Again, the link is in the chat. Our newsletter comes out on the second Tuesday of every month. And then if there are any events, we always send you a reminder. So we hope that you would keep up with what we're doing and that you will engage with us. Ways to give, you guys know we can't do this without funding. So donate, donate, donate. Here are some ways that you can donate. Uh, the link is readily available on our website. Thank you all so much for coming. And again, thank you for the team at building uh, Gwinnett Building Babies Brains. We're so happy that you joined us. This has been, uh, this is so much great information. We could have gone on for another hour, right? Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next month on June 21st for Stream with Black Children. Have a great day, everyone. Hey, Kim. <laughs>